16 ways shady car dealers can steal from you. That's right, I'm mostly talking about the finance office. Everyone else at the dealership might have lied to you, but this is your final stop, and you're going to meet the one person who can actually steal from you. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, also known as The Homework Guy, and author of Is That the Best You Can Do? This video is brought to you by YouTube's best channel on car buying and selling, courtesy of The Homework Guy team and our super high-intensity training for car buyers. Check the merch shelf below if you want one of these cool shirts or hoodies like this one. In business, mistakes and paperwork are very common, but at a dealership, it's funny how those mistakes always are to the dealer's advantage. Errors can be on the agreed trade values, purchase price, loan terms, and several other ways. Have you ever gone home and looked at your car contract and thought, hmm, what did I just sign up for? How did the price go up? How did my down payment disappear? Why did my interest rate change? I signed up for 84 months of payments? Today, I'm going to share 16 different ways the finance officer can steal from you. In big and small ways, the finance officer can be one of the most unscrupulous individuals you'll ever find in a dealership. And I'm being crystal clear here. They will steal from you if you let them. To be clear, not all car dealers do this stuff. However, I can guarantee you that all car dealers have the potential to commit several of these mistakes, even if it was an accident. Communication is never perfect at a car dealership, so it means that you have to be on your toes at all times. Before we go into the juicy details, here's a short message from the Homework Guy team. If you're a first timer on the Homework Guy channel, consider subscribing and leaving us a comment below. Add hashtag the Homework Guy if you'd like a response directly from Kevin or one of the Homework Guy staff members. We're always glad to help our loyal followers, and the best part is, there's no charge. You can also email the team at info at thehomeworkguy.com with a specific question, or if you'd like a free contract review, just black out your personal information and send it to us. We'd love to hear from you. Just be aware that we do get a lot of requests, so just be patient while you wait for a response. Back to you, Kevin. Let's get into the 16 ways a car dealer can steal from you and all the thievery I'm about to discuss. It's happening in your last stop in finance. This isn't an all-inclusive list. It's just some of the bigger stuff, and you can easily prevent it from happening just by being aware. Number one, trade value lower than agreed. It's very common that the trade value you were given in the end will not be the trade value that appears on your contract. Don't let that happen to you. Number two, trade payoff. I got a call from a salesman who didn't know what to do. His customer had just traded in a car. The payoff was small, just $2,000, or at least that's what the customer thought. It got wrote up in the deal that way. Well, a phone call to the bank showed that the payoff was actually $1,300, a $700 difference. Upon hearing this fact, the owner of the dealer advised the finance officer, just make the $700 disappear. Stolen. They did make it disappear and stole the money from the customer. Know what your payoff is if you still owe money on your car. Number three, sale price higher than agreed. This is super typical. In fact, this is one of the top complaints I receive everywhere around the country. You get into finance and suddenly your car costs more. Number four, cash down payment disappears. You just handed cash, a check, your debit card to the finance officer. How many times does it happen that this money never shows up on the contract? Well, enough times that it made the list. You gave them cash down payment. Make sure you see it in plain writing on the contract or they will have stolen your down payment from you. Number five, failure to list rebates on new cars. There are often many different rebates. They won't list all of them if you didn't know about them, and it's a slick way to pocket extra cash when a buyer is clueless. Number six, estimating non-taxable fees. This is really common now. This appears on many contracts we receive. Non-taxable fees are charges from your state government, and they are never estimated. They are exact. Whenever I see this line item on a contract, I will always make them give the exact number. Suddenly, a $400 estimated non-tax fee is $164.27, just as you expect from your DMV office. Number seven, added products without your consent. This is a classic. When challenged, if you catch it, the finance man will say, it's already installed. Call BS on this. That thorough walkthrough you had from the salesman was supposed to reveal everything that was installed on the car. There should be no surprises once you're sitting in finance. Number eight, added fees without your consent. Any taxable fee. If caught, they'll make the claim that they are non-negotiable. We have a video on this channel titled 11 Fake Fees, and it covers many of these. If the finance officer thought he could get away with it, 
he'd charge you a POS fee and a blinker fluid fee, just to name a few, because they're all made up fees anyway, all designed to steal money from you. Number nine, lies about banker demands. This is very common, especially if your credit isn't perfect. The usual line is, our banker wants you to have blah, blah, blah. No banker wants you to have a loan that is much fatter than the actual cash value of the car you're buying. This is ludicrous nonsense. Never let them tell you that their banker wants you to buy their crap. Number 10, changing the interest rate. They said they could match your 2.9% from your credit union, right? Well, does the contract say 4.25%? There's only one reason. They didn't think you'd notice or they hoped you wouldn't notice. On a typical car loan, they get $500 extra for every half point they mark up your interest rate. Don't let them get away with it. Number 11, changing the amount financed. Here's another classic. I'm going to put up this post from somebody here on the channel, and I'll share it again at the end. They went from $10,000, which was supposed to be financed, to $10,999.99. And the finance man makes an excuse that the $999.99 just was a computer glitch. Right. Number 12, changing your monthly payment. This deserves its own listing because while it's connected to everything on this list, don't let them be off by a cent when it comes to monthly payment. This is a red flag that tells you numbers are being fudged in the contract and they very likely change your loan term to cover up their attempt to steal from you. This leads us to number 13, changed loan term. A change from 60 months to 62 months costs you a ton of money and it's a classic technique to steal from you. Number 14, on a lease, raising the money factor, which is similar to interest rate when buying, or raising the capitalized cost, similar to purchase price when buying. On your lease contract is where these will show up. These two factors are just like interest rate and purchase price. Don't let them get away with this if you're leasing. Number 15, also on a lease, pushing warranties on your leased vehicle when any smart person knows that the manufacturer warranty covers everything during a typical lease term. Number 16, signing you out on a car with damaged history, even a salvaged title by title washing. Unbelievable, but some of the worst dealers of all time pull this stunt and there are far too many drivers out on the road right now that have no clue their car has a salvage title. Along the way, somebody lied to them and stole half the value of the purchase price from them with one big fat cover-up. These are the 16 ways a car dealer steals from you and largely in their finance offices. What's their favorite strategy to distract you so they can get away with doing all of this to you? It all started from the moment you walked in the door. They got you focused on three basic things right away. Your cash down your trade value if you were trading your car in, and monthly payment. You notice that I did not say price. They try to stay away from price conversations at all costs. They took the three things I mentioned and shoved them into a single transaction, a single focus. If they succeeded, you're pulling the trigger, or so you think, on one final piece of information, the monthly payment. And by doing so, you left the door wide open for everything we just described. There's a habit a lot of people have that works against them. You don't like to be mean or rude to others. Questioning people seems rude, and a lot of people fail to do the proper job of looking through everything in finance because they don't feel comfortable doing it while this guy is breathing down their neck from across the desk. It seems rude, especially as many times have you heard that he is working for you from other people in the dealership. I personally review the contract right in front of them, and I'll take 15 minutes in silence to do this because I like them to know they're caught. I'm not emotionally involved, and they know it. However, this straight-up approach is too much for many people, so here's a technique I suggest you use. You'll find it incredibly helpful. In fact, it's almost as good as if you were able to get me directly involved in helping you. Here's what you need to do. After everything is printed and the only thing left for you to do is sign everything, tell the finance man you'd like to go out to a private table somewhere and look everything over before you sign the contract. Do not allow them to make you sign a screen. That is a huge no-no. Have printed documents that you can put your hands on. Tell the finance man that you have someone that you need to call and bounce big decisions like this off of. They aren't going to like it, but there's nothing they can do to stop you. Do not accept any offer to do this in their office, even if they offer to leave. Go somewhere else where there's no chance of a listening ear being around. Have a trusted mentor available that you can call, and here's a pro tip. Ask your friend or mentor to watch some of the videos on this channel just like you did so they're prepared to help you. Have them do it before you leave to the dealership. 
that's huge. Now that you're outside the finance office and you have all that paperwork in your hand and you're ready to review, take a picture of the contract and text it to your friend. Give them a few minutes to review it and then call. With them on the phone, walk through each line together, combing every detail of the contract. They don't have to be an auto expert like me. They have a huge advantage that you don't. They are not emotionally involved in your purchase, so they bring an entirely different perspective to the table. That clear thinking head will mean everything to you. Together, you'll do a much better job of defeating attempts to steal from you than you ever could on your own. When you've completed this review and you're ready to go back into finance, make a decision on what you're willing to walk away from. If the finance manager gives you the wrong answers or refuses to fix things that clearly need to be changed, make a decision to get up and walk out. Ask to see a desk manager on the way out the door and give specific details why you're walking out. Tell them that the finance manager, the office you were just in, just tried to steal from you because they did. Then leave. Here's the thing. Maybe you really wanted the car. Maybe you really didn't want to walk out. But here's why you should do it anyway. Getting up and walking out is one of the top strategies I suggest you deploy when things go wrong at a dealership and they start playing games with you. They want your business and they want it bad because they have to see five to ten more potential buyers before they get another chance to go as far as they did with you today. Get up and walk. Watch them chase you, begging for another chance to treat you right. Even if you go home anyway, don't be surprised when your phone starts ringing. It's amazing how much more they want to help you when they no longer have control over you. It's amazing how much more they want to help when the gig is up, when they realized you caught them. You buying a car in the end heals a number of wounds if they can get you to do it. To an outside agency like the Attorney General, for an example, the dealer can argue that you might be saying you were mistreated, but you bought a car in the end. Anyway, they'll never say it. But when they did indeed try to steal from you, they not only still want your car deal, they want reasonable deniability if this story should ever come to light. Make sense? All right, if you appreciated the video today, consider giving us a big thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Include hashtag the homework guy. Share the video on social media with your friends and family and make sure to join us on Facebook and Twitter too. We post notifications and other updates on our social media sites and answer car buying questions there too. If you love what we do and want to say thanks with a tip, PayPal and Cash App, the links you're seeing here, will be easy to find in the description box down below. This is just one of the ways the Homework Guy team helps to fund the production and behind-the-scenes ways to make our videos possible. So thanks in advance for your support. We've helped millions of car buyers with videos, feedback in your questions, and much more. And you notice we often produce videos from questions posed right here in the comment section by our viewers. And we'll always have your back with more great content. Thanks everyone for coming back. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter. Until next time, take care everyone.